Hello and welcome to Healing from CPTSD. My name is Justin Vanderwind and I am your host. In today's episode, we're going to be talking a bit about why the mental health field seems to know so little about narcissistic abuse, CPTSD, and even trauma in general. If you haven't done so already, be sure to head to our website at healingfromcptsd.com and sign up on our email list for regular updates along with a free weekly newsletter. The Healing from CPTSD course on how to heal from CPTSD and take your life back will be launching on January 8th, 2022, so be sure to sign up on our email list to be first in line for the launch. All links will be in the description below. All right, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Healing from CPTSD. My name is Justin Vanderwind, and I am your host. Uh, so in today's show, I really wanted to talk a little bit about my experiences with the mental health field as a whole, and honestly, why it was so hard to, <laughs> like, find a therapist who who could help me, which I never did, <laughs> by the way. It just got to the point where... I was like, forget you people. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do this by myself. I mean, you know, I, I just wanted to talk about why it is that narcissistic abuse and CPTSD, and frankly, it seems like just emotional trauma across the board, isn't really widely known by the mental health field. I don't know if that's true 100% because I've only been to a number of therapists and doctors. None of them, you know, ever mentioned narcissistic abuse or personality disorders or CPTSD or or even emotional trauma I don't really get it I really don't get it um and I know I've I've touched on this before but I kind of wanted to give a an entire episode to like this whole topic of discussion because the truth is it should <laughs> it should not be that difficult for people who you know have dealt with something like narcissistic abuse or, or struggle with CPTSD to find the help that they need. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable. And as far as I'm concerned, it's really unacceptable. I mean, the mental health field has got to do better. And I don't know why it is that I had to take the journey I took to find this. And, and it took decades of, of searching. Now, luckily, I started my search when I was pretty young. So it's it's like I'm, I'm still fairly young. Um, but you know, it still was an app. It took a long time and it was unbelievable to the point where there's probably a lot of people out there struggling with, you know, CPTSD and different types of emotional trauma issues who, you know, they, it's like, maybe they don't want to find help or they're not doing anything to find help. But the saddest part is even if they did try, it would be almost impossible for them, I mean, I don't know, maybe things have changed in the mental health field now to find the help that they actually need without being labeled crazy or misdiagnosed and given a whole bunch of drugs that they don't actually need. So I, I really, honestly, you know, I know there's a movement, you know, to sort of bring more awareness to narcissistic abuse and its reality and what it is and how so many people have to go through it all over the world. I don't know. I, I, I want a movement for the mental health field to start recognizing, um, you know, making things like just emotional trauma even because CPTSD is sort of like a more severe, complex form of emotional trauma. But there is no reason why I, you know, people have to go untreated or unacknowledged with emotional trauma while all these people are just sort of like protecting the abusers. It's unbelievable. So I, I just feel like the mental health field should be focused more on looking for emotional trauma and, you know, working to heal emotional trauma. Now, the truth is, <laughs> because I had to jump through so many hoops and, and do so many unbelievable, you know, things just to find out, like, what was going on with me and then do un more unbelievable things to heal from it or find methods that actually worked and to really understand it, you know... I have to say, and I've, I've seen some, you know, I watch, obviously, like a lot of us, I watch a lot of uh, different YouTube videos on, you know, not only narcissistic abuse, but different therapy sort of like topics and stuff and just videos from different therapists. And I saw one at one point from a man named Daniel Mackler, I think his name is. He's got glasses and he, he's, he's an interesting person. You might know who he is. He's a former therapist who just stopped being a therapist because he couldn't take it anymore and he kind of just shares his you know genuine thoughts and feelings on his experiences as a therapist and the mental health field as a whole and he'd always say it's 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 amazing that you know this 
mental health field system is supposed to be treating mental health, but it's really like a profoundly sick system in and of itself, which doesn't surprise me because that's like the, you know, everything I had to do to deal with these people to find out what was actually wrong with me showed me that the men- something's not right with the mental health field. So it's nice to hear other therapists saying similar things. And that he also has said in different videos, which I thought was really interesting, because I've, I've always felt kind of similar myself, was that he said most therapists aren't that good at what they do, right? Like they just don't understand. They're, they're not that, you know, unless they've done their own work or they've been through a lot of trauma themselves and then come out of that trauma, like doing their own work, they're not going to be that effective. And that was in his opinion. That's also my opinion as just a person who's been going to therapists to try to find one that can actually help. Um, And he also said that, you know, when it comes to like talk therapy, like most healing, like emotional healing can be done on your own right? Like without a therapist. So I ha- part of me wonders, <laughs> you know, everybody always talks about big pharma and, you know, these different um, influences, you know, like I'm sure that they want to push. And that's something else this, this particular therapist was talking about was all the, because we all know that the mental health field is constantly sort of pushing different sorts of drugs, almost like servers at a restaurant trying to, you know, <laughs> upsell you on, on some dessert or something like it's crazy, man. So, uh, y- you have to wonder if that's what this is all about. Cause if, if you can treat trauma, right, emotional trauma and psychological trauma without medication or without even a therapist, if you had the right environment, then I think the entire world of mental health would just sort of vanish or something like we don't really need them and I hate to say this but that's been my experience (laughs) you know like what I've what I've put together and discovered and um which I what I've put together in this this uh healing system I keep telling you about and what I'm putting together in a a course that'll be launching in uh, January 2022 um it's beyond like you, you just don't need anybody else to do it and it's far more effective uh at healing and and rewiring your brain and taking your life back now when when it comes to things like medication and stuff like that uh if you feel you need something obviously that's something that has to be prescribed by a, a mental health professional which is fine um but as far as all the other stuff that goes on with um just in the world of psychology and psychotherapy most of it, you know, it's not really a science either, and that's what Daniel Mackler says. Also, that they they want to they want you to believe that these people that went and they majored in psychology and got master's degrees and some of them doctor's degrees, like there's this really hard body of quote science behind it. And he said it's just not true. <laughs> there's no, you know, it's you know so. I, I guess it, it's just ridiculous. I just think the mental health field is kind of a joke to be honest with you and I'm I'm hard on them because of how many people are suffering out there who even if they went to a mental health professional probably wouldn't get the help they needed probably would be misdiagnosed and you know as far as I'm concerned even if you feel you need some form of medication you know learning how to heal and process trauma is something you want to know how to do anyway right like I've seen these therapists with like cognitive behavioral therapy, which isn't bad, right? But as far as I'm concerned, it's it's just one piece of a uh, of sort of the 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 puzzle of of healing from trauma. I mean, the core of it should be identifying emotional trauma and then teaching people how to heal from that, right? Which is what the course I'm putting together is going to do. So Honestly, I kind of want to have a little bit of a mental health revolution here and give the power back to the people. You know, I think there's far more power from doing certain methods for your own healing and empowerment on your own. And if you want to get together with others for like relational healing and stuff, I really think, you know, like those 12-step programs they have, just I'm not saying you have to go to a 12-step program if you don't want to, but that just that setup where it's just regular everyday people that just meet up at some you know maybe the, some room in a church or some some basic place and all they do is just sit around kind of like in a circle with some chairs it doesn't cost any money there's nobody's asking for your insurance you know what i mean like 
and as far as really opening up and and you know even just vulnerability can help so much uh just just alleviating your your toxic shame right that you're carrying around if you deal with cptsd uh in a safe and non-judgmental environment um i think that if you had some tools for yourself to to do your own inner work along with something like you know a 12 step program set up where even if even if it's not an actual 12 step program if there's just some you know place where some people get together and can just kind of um speak freely and verbalize their genuine thoughts and feelings on any given issue i think that that's really what people need for emotional healing and and really me- a lot of mental healing too i mean that would be even if people have other issues like other psychological issues this dynamic um, would take care of so much that people have to struggle with. And, you know, most people just don't feel seen or heard or acknowledged just for themselves or what they're really feeling or what they're really thinking. So I really like the dynamic of the 12. I like the 12 steps themselves. I think it's a great place to start for personal growth and personal development. Obviously, if you've got some kind of, you know, uh, addiction you're trying to fight or something, many people have uh, overcome their issues with these 12 steps and stuff. I think it's, it's great stuff. I think what they created there was far beyond just that is far beyond any, anything in the mental health field. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? (laughs) So, and they're easy to set up. I mean, you just create a little website or something and you know, it's like a meetup or something. So I'm really hoping we can do something where that becomes more and more of a norm where people can get their emotional needs met, uh, in an easy and cheap slash basically free way uh and not ha- and and just you know not have to worry about trying to find somebody who actually can help you right um or spending a lot of time doing it when you know what the problem is and how to deal with it you can get through these issues so much faster right for a big part of the problem is just finding out what the issue was and that's why a lo- that's why I'm like you know so <laughs> perplexed by the mental health field because I was there with them and we still couldn't figure it out (laughs) like what my issue was which turned out to be fundamentally CPTSD so I'm sure a lot of you have probably had similar experiences many of you and and don't even know what to do right so I think we need all the help we can get I think we can kind of like give people and oh, and Daniel Mackler said this too. Like he he did his own work on himself, right? Which primarily was like journaling, writing certain things out, v- verbal ventilation on paper. Um, is un. I mean, it sounds really simple, but it's unbelievably powerful because of how your brain works. Um, where you know it's 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 kind of like the basics are, uh, you know, to to write using a pen or a pencil requires you to sort of activate the logic side of your brain in order to do that right so when you're writing about emotional issues what's really fascinating is you know your the emotional side of your brain sort of opens up and your your feelings sort of move over to the logic side of your brain where they can be logically processed through where you can see them that's why writing about your feelings or emotional issues are is so unbelievably powerful because it's it's kind of like the pen and the paper are i mean as simple as they are they're allowing you they're like opening up a, a door for you to not only heal your emotional trauma or whatever is in there but to actually see it in a in a logical way and if you don't see it the cool thing is is the pen like if you ask yourself certain questions right and then you kind of dig in like meant like if I just sat there with somebody and said you know they said how do you feel so I might not know right I mean I'm better now at um recognizing my feelings and being able to verbalize them but some people don't they don't know or they or it's like well what's the you know but if you dig around in your mind and your feelings with a pen and a paper it'll come to the surface and you'll be able to process it through the pen it's crazy it's so simple but it's so unbelievably powerful in fact that's the only thing that ever worked for me as far as really cracking open my emotional self and and being able to um, access my uh, actual buried sort of like frozen feelings from all the trauma and unlocked, you know, all these emotions and, and you know, it was unbelievable. I mean, I felt so free just from this process that I was, you know, I was just writing out certain memories and that's really what it was. See, because that's how the brain works with 
like memory and uh, specifically like traumatic memories is it will the the subconscious will kind of like lock these memories back there and that's why people have they get they like they feel like they have blockages or there's some kind of you know it's all in the subconscious so when you're writing with a pen and paper uh, it it sort of allows you to access that subconscious stuff, so that trauma that's actually in there. Think of it almost like a pocket of of energy, you know, that's like in your brain. It allows you to undo it and really free it. That's really what the processing is 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 freeing your brain and your nervous system and your your emotions from the trauma that's that you're sort of carrying around, right? Because you know that's just it's kind of how the brain works as far as dealing with like if you were in a really extreme situation like a car accident or you witness something unbelievable that's really hard for your brain to process you know your defense mechanisms are set up in your brain so that it kind of pushes a lot of that trauma back to their subconscious so that you can kind of keep functioning in that moment of emergency or crisis kind of like what happens in war right uh, but that trauma then has to be kind of processed and let out. Otherwise, it's going to be really uncomfortable and it's going to cause all kinds of other emotional and psychological issues for you down the line. So that's all it is. It's it's really all about learning how to free yourself of your own trauma and sort of rewire your brain a little bit. And that's really easy to do and safe. <laughs> you know, you can have some... I mean, you, you can... As far as talk therapy goes, my God, you, you can just have a partner or a friend or something that doesn't even have to be a therapist who can just sort of, you know, just listen, right? Just just sort of like, I think they call it unconditional positive regard where where you're kind of, someone can just hear you. They're just listening. They're just giving you attention. And that's in and of itself very healing. But actually, you know, verbalizing your, your feelings versus writing them down, there's a difference because there's actual grooves in your brain, right, as far as they relate to... Well, pr everything, right? Like things you learn, th you know, traumatic events. So when you're writing, you know, you again, you're using that side of your brain and you're processing different traumatic events. You are, um, you're actually sort of undoing grooves in your brain, certain grooves in your brain. So that's why I, I use that phrase, un you know, rewiring your, your brain because, and also just your thoughts about, maybe you have low self-esteem or, or you have, you know, uh, irrational, toxic thoughts about yourself. Doing this will allow you to see those sort of, un, you know, subconscious thoughts running in your mind and and how they relate to your feelings, and then you can rewire them, right? Like re recondition your brain with just better uh, subconscious beliefs, which is pretty easy to do. So if you can if you can tackle like being open emotionally and just sort of looking at what's in your subconscious and just rewiring it. Uh, and you learn how to get your needs met, <clears throat> fundamentally, that's what most people need to do as far as healing their trauma is concerned. So I think <laughs> it's so cheap and and so easily done that I think that that's, I really believe that's part of the reason why so many in the mental health field don't want to focus on trauma, right? Because it, it you don't need all this, all these bells and whistles. You don't need to sit on a couch for seven years or something or take take some medicine i mean i'm not i'm not against medication some people you know find it helpful but you still got to process your trauma right and, and if it's numbing your trauma that's not good <laughs> you know like you need to be able to feel and you need to be able to heal what's what's going on inside you so it's mind-blowing to me I, I don't know if there's some kind of conspiracy with the pharmaceutical companies or something but i'm telling you man I, I I just can't believe how difficult it was for me to find out about this. And as far as I'm concerned, emotional trauma is not like it's not like some rare disease that nobody's ever heard of before. Like pretty much we all know what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, even PTSD with war veterans coming back. For, do you know that for the longest time, the mental health field didn't even recognize PTSD? Now, what's that all about? You know what I mean? Like, that's insane, right? I mean, to me, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to, to understand that if someone's exposed to like a lot of unbelievable violence, and their life is literally on the line, twenty four seven while they're in war, like your brain, it's gonna take a toll, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and a lot of the poor veterans, you know, have all this unresolved trauma that, again, like, talk about being mad with the mental health field. 
Um, I mean, I mean, what's up with that? You got these people that fought for our country and it's like they put their lives on the line and you just they come back and you treat them like that. You don't give them what they need. And a lot of vets are homeless and stuff or, you know, some of them, a lot of them, you know, are suicidal or end up taking their own lives because they can't handle the trauma. And apparently no one's there to help them. So I don't. I mean, this this really need. I mean, talk about a movement that I want to be part of. It's like to me, the mental health field needs some some new stuff, or we can just completely bypass them. That's kind of the way where I'm leaning. <laughs> you know, like that's why I'm like, just forget it. If you want to go to a therapist, go right ahead. But as far as healing and getting your life back, you 100% don't need to uh, go to a therapist in order to do that. You just need some tools and some know how. Which, you know, th th there's good stuff out there, and the course I'm creating is just going to contribute to that overall sort of, you know, knowledge base of, of what people can do to take their lives back. Because um, enough is enough. Like, you know, then then you get to the point where you start wondering, like, do they want us to... It's like we live in such a traumatizing society, right? Just even if you think about it, it's like... You know, just everything on TV and the movies, not just the news, but just television. I've seen so many shows, and I'm not an old man. I'm not a prude. I'm not, like, overly religious or anything, but, man, the stuff I've seen on, on TV as far as violence goes is so unbelievable. You know, video games and shows and movies, it's so... Ex I've seen stuff that's so unbelievably extreme just in video games and cartoons and stuff these days. That I'm like this, because I can feel it. I don't know, but you know, maybe I'm a little sensitive. But like, if I like, for example, if I'm playing a video game like um, Call of Duty or something, or one of these, you know, like shooter game. I don't honestly really like those games. I just tried to play them before because they're so popular with people. I don't like those games. I stopped playing those games because because I could feel like just the energy you know you're shooting all these people and and the people yelling and screaming in your headset it's it's your brain is it's not i really don't think it's good for your brain i mean really like not just video games but just the violence right because I, I can feel something happening you know when i witness something really traumatic like these crazy video games or people like ripping people's arms off and stuff i can feel something in my brain i don't know what that is but it's kind of like a certain level of shock right you're like oh my god i still have that as a grown man <laughs> i'll see so certain things that are so unbelievably over the top violent in sh in shows like on adult swim or something and my there's times where my mouth actually drops and again i'm not like some sheltered kid from the from a Mormon family or something like I, I, you know, so my point is there's so much traumatization in our society that I don't know. I just think we need to knock it off. Right. It's like, what, what is this? Like, why is a, why is there so much trauma going on in our society on almost every level? Then forget about the mainstream media. That's pretty much all it is. Like, remember it's so remember how always people always talk about it's bad news. It's just, it's like traumatizing news. It's always horrible. It always kind of makes your brain feel kind of like, do you ever feel, you ever watch the news and feel good afterwards ever in your entire life? <laughs> you know, like, I think one of the biggest examples, and there's always drama, right? I almost feel like the news is like, there's, it's like just narcissists running the news, right? Because the tactics that I see in mainstream media are very similar to dealing with actual narcissists myself, whereas it's, it's like, like it's almost like chaos manufacturing, right? Like baiting, all these smear campaigns, like all this just garbage. It's just like emotional garbage. It's just like talking about people. Every it's always negative news or gossip. It, it, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's it's terrible. So we know what trauma is. So why aren't we focusing on it in the mental health field? Is there is it possible that some people might be benefiting? from a traumatized society because there's no shortage of trauma all over them. And furthermore, I really think, you know, as we know, trauma, traumatizing families, you know, they pass that on from one generation to the next. And in order to get out of it, you really have to put in some work. Like a lot of us just had to completely leave our entire families. And um, so you got to ask yourself, like, how did this begin? Like what where you know what I mean? But I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I just feel like we need to, if, if the mental health field doesn't need to change, I feel like it's time for a mental health revolution. And uh, I think we're, we're, I think we're going to do it, frankly. <laughs> you know, when I see these, these people on the internet, 
you they have YouTube channels and podcasts that are talking. I mean, they're are they not light years beyond any therapist you've ever seen in your life? You know what I mean? Like the, these people that have dealt with narcissistic abuse or something, and they and they've healed a, a significant amount, and then they come out and talking about this stuff. It's far. It blows any doctor away that I've ever seen as far as mental health was concerned. They don't even know what they're talking about half the time. <laughs> so it just seems like we live in a society where the, it's like they just it's like the powers that be just want to traumatize the crap out of everybody and then numb them all up on drugs and garbage food and stuff. You know what I'm that's what I'm seeing here. <laughs> that's that's the that's what I've experienced. It's 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 a very unhealthy situation. It's a very unhealthy setup. So I I'm a big believer that you know getting back to healthy uh, state of health is um starts with with you like starts with tra- like emotional healing emotional you know healing emotional trauma right i mean i i think that's the core and obviously like making sure you're getting proper nutrition and stuff like that you know enough with this enough is enough enough of the suffering and the craziness and the poisonous whatever the sick mental health field system is in the sick society we live in like man i i don't know so yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, what I think about the mental health field at this point in time, and some of my thoughts on, you know, why it is the way that it is currently. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, in um, in Pete Walker's book CPTSD from Surviving to Thriving, he actually says that John Bradshaw, um, who I think is like a traumatologist, actually said that if the mental health field focused on trauma as the as the primary issue that many people have first that the the dsm or the diagnostical and statistical manual for mental health would shrink from the size of a dictionary to uh the size of like a thin pamphlet i just remembered that so so maybe that's it man maybe that's the whole reason they the big farmer they want to push these drugs and make some money off of it they better not, we better not be living in a society where they're deliberately traumatizing people and making people sick and anxious and depressed and then drug and then selling them drugs to make them feel better that's terrible that's so bad but i think a lot of us know it we know it we intuit it we've seen it i'm sure you you hearing me saying these words right now i'm sure it's probably not a big surprise to you you probably had very similar thoughts to yourself so how about we uh have a revolution of health and peace and harmony and we start with each other. We start with ourselves, and and we start like at the grassroots level, and we just start healing ourselves one one person at a time, and doing what's best for our well being, and sort of opting out of all the traumatization and all the unhealthy, ineffective systems that we have in our society right now. It's time. For, I mean, we need some change. We need to heal. So, those are my thoughts on uh, why the the mental. And by the way, the mental health field, if it continues to exist, you guys. If there's any doctors or therapists listening to this, you, you, we got to get back to trauma. I mean, you got to learn about narcissistic abuse and CPTSD at least to help people that come to see you because that, you know, you got to like learn the signs or something, but you know, to the characteristics of what to look out for so these people can get help. And if you don't know how to do it, there should be specialists somewhere that specifically specialize in, in, in helping people heal from complex trauma. Otherwise, we're just going to take our lives back, and I, I'm i going to help give people the power to be able to do that. We're just having a, a little bit of a revolution here. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well, and um, I'm still working on this uh, this course. It's coming along really nicely. I really enjoy it. As hard as my life has been and as painful and complex as it's been, it almost kind of feels like this this what i'm creating here is is at least part of the the purpose of why i had to go through all that so i could learn about all this stuff heal myself and then just at least help give some some clarity to other people anyway i hope you guys are doing well and i will see you um in the next episode or in our facebook group healing from cptsd as it is just the facebook group all links will be in the description below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.